Hello, welcome to the Freedom from Anger podcast. Uh, this is just my little intro before the intro. Just kind of giving you a, a heads up on a couple of things. I did finally get around to updating my website. So all my social media links are there at the bottom of the homepage. Check that out. It's freedomanger.com. It's got my contact information. If you want to reach out, talk to me. That's the easiest way to shoot me an email. Also, if you have any ideas for topics or guests, that's the way to get a hold of me. Um, sent out several emails today to some potential guests. So hopefully get this podcast fired back up and get a few more episodes out there rather than I think I've been averaging maybe like one a month so far this year. So I'd like to at least double, possibly triple that before the end of the year. But all right, well, that's pretty much all I got to say. Hope you enjoy this episode. I'm still using the AI editing. And if you don't like it, let me know. I'll go back to the old slow way of doing things. But yeah, anyway, well, hope you enjoy. And as always, uh, stay safe. Hello, welcome to the Freedom From Anger podcast. I'm joined today with Bracca Getz. She is an author, has written many children's books. And uh, today we're going to talk about the pleasure ladder, the gratitude. I'm very excited for you to be here. Bracca, how are you doing today? Thank you so much. We had a chance to talk briefly a couple weeks ago and... You mentioned something called the pleasure ladder. I never heard of that. So did you kind of expand on that a little bit? Yes. I love sharing about the pleasure ladder because most people have never heard of it. And it changed my life. I think it changes the life of everybody that learns of it. So there's five levels to the pleasure ladder. And it corresponds to our five fingers because the message is we have the power in our own hands to bring joy into our lives at any moment. That is what I did not know. That is so significant. And the, our hands can remind us of this all the time. It's within our power. The five levels, they also correspond to the five levels of the human soul and the lowest level of the soul is the part that's attached to our bodies. So when we experience any natural thing with our senses, like healthy food or being in nature, moving, dancing, gardening, swimming, or music, like all these things, when we experience any of them with gratitude, then it nourishes our body and our soul. That's the lowest level of pleasure. And if you go up, the next level is love. How can love be totally empowering? It's dependent on somebody else. This is coming from ancient mystical wisdom. So the ancient definition of love is focusing on the virtues of another. What do you value about somebody else? That's the definition of love. So we can bring that into our lives at any time. Like even in prison, a person could focus on like a grandmother that once did a kindness for them and instantaneously they get a warm emotional feeling that lifts them up and can inspire them. So we can bring the pleasure of love into our lives at any moment, even with nobody else being present just by focusing on the virtues of another. The lowest level is connecting to a physical, natural thing, appreciating it with gratitude. The next level, appreciating another being. And the third level up is called meaning, doing something good and meaningful in the world. That brings us, each level brings us more connection, a deeper connection into the world. Because like when we are in addiction, in active addiction, we feel disconnected. We feel estranged, lonely, or 
cut off. So what we need is connection. That's what we're really looking for. So this brings to a physical thing, to another being, and then giving back with gratitude, doing something meaningful, that brings us even greater, more lasting pleasure. And what's even higher than that? Oh, a great example of this is like, I was on another show and I was up to the level of meaning. And the host said that he had just finished eating two slices of pizza. There was a knock at his door and his neighbor needed his help for two minutes. After he helped his neighbor, he came back and he didn't want the rest of the pizza. He didn't need to because he just filled up right that minute. He filled up with gratitude that he could help somebody else. He connected. He put the rest in the fridge for the next day. That's how much it fills us up right away. So higher than meaning is really interesting. It's creativity. It's when we put a unique part of ourselves into the world. Get on a high when we are being creative, like we don't feel like eating or sleeping. We get into a zone where we're not even aware of time passing. So that's an even more lasting pleasure than all the other levels. And the highest level of all is called transcendence. It's when the separation, everything kind of just dissolves and lifts. We, we recognize that we're connected to everybody and everything, and we're all connected to the same source energy. It's that state of awe and wonder about the world. And it's a sense of unity. It's also when we transcend our own limitations, like that moment when we make that first crack in a bad habit, we begin to break an addiction. We're transcending the level we were at before and we're returning to our core being, the essence of who we really are. So those are the five levels of pleasure. The price that we have to pay to climb the pleasure ladder is just one thing. And that's gratitude. It's gratitude that fills us up when we feel empty. And that's really the secret to happiness. Yeah, you're 100% right. Like I said, the gratitude is huge. And a lot of people, we don't practice gratitude. We're not grateful for. We're always just focused on what we don't have versus what do we actually have. And, yes. And then when, if you're dealing with somebody that's fighting an addiction and there's a disconnect from other people and not a lot of gratitude uh, being thrown around. Yes, exactly. So like, that's why I write children's books too, because I love teaching this to children in as early in life as possible. So they don't have to play catch up like us. You know, we learn these things later on in life and it's harder, but we could still do it. Practicing gratitude gets easier and easier the more you do it. When you begin to do it, it feels weird. It's like awkward. But the more you do it, it creates more gratitude pathways in your brain. Like when you travel on a road that hasn't been traveled on, it's very hard. It's very gravelly. But once you get those grooves in, it, it gets easier and easier to be a grateful person. With anything, the, the more you do it, something become a habit. And especially if you're in, in recovery, it's like we always tell people, it's first couple of years, that's the toughest. And even after that, you still got to watch what you do. And it ain't all sunshine and rainbows once you hit the two-year mark. But so with the pleasure light, how did you come about learning about this? Yeah. Well, I was suffering from food addictions. It was fluctuating between trying all these diets and then having these uncontrollable binges. It really is like being in a prison. That's what an addiction feels like. And it's as if the walls get narrower, narrower as you get more deeply into it. And the behaviors get more and more bizarre. Everything's done in secret. So nobody knows how you're suffering. I look successful on the outside, but inside I was suffering. And I really wanted to, to know what the purpose of life was because I really didn't feel like going on like that. It was just a horrible way to live. It, it took up all my mental energy, my physical energy. It just absorbs you. So I was searching. I finally, luckily, I was searching 
for spirituality. And when I finally found this ancient wisdom, which is actually a Kabbalistic teaching from my own heritage, which I, I did not even value or and I didn't learn about it as a child, I was so grateful. So that's when I began writing children's books to share this and 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 also I share it with adults and it just as it changed my life I'm I love changing other lives as well to recognize that there's no scarcity of pleasure in this world cuz I felt such a scarcity like that's why we overeat or drugs or alcohol to get that immediate pleasure to keep lasting we just keep stuffing it in and it, it, it ends up we end up emptier than ever afterwards because it, it doesn't fill us up long enough we want the pleasure to keep lasting learning gratitude is a way to actually keep the pleasure throughout your life once you learn these happiness skills yeah and you're in control that's it I didn't trust life. I didn't trust myself. So then when you recognize that that's really the purpose of our being here, to enjoy this world in gratitude. And many people who have had traumatic childhood or they suffered from abuse or neglect, they didn't get the compassion that they needed as a child. So we can learn to give ourselves that self-compassion through savoring and lingering in gratitude and that the more we enjoy that then we get used to it and we can live lives of giving to ourselves this joyful compassion yeah and you got the five levels the physical the gratitude love meaning creativity and then transcendence Yes. But like you said, the gatekeeper for all of these is that gratitude. Yes. I'm a firm believer in a lot of my clients I've worked with over the years. I always suggest starting a gratitude journal. As soon as you wake up in the morning and write down two or three things that you're, gra that you're grateful for and try to help you get started the day on, on a good note. Yes. And I had another guest and his practice was, I'm trying to remember, but he would write down two or three things he was grateful for. And then he'd write down a couple of things that scared him or something that he wanted to work on. And that's how he got his day started. But yeah, I mean, it comes down to us. It's our choice whether we want it or not. We can't find it through other people or money or I know plenty of people that have lots of money and they're miserable. Yes, so. absolutely. Yeah. Money, fame, power, like we think prestige. We think these things will bring happiness and we know they don't. We see all these famous people. We know that that's not the answer. It's so much more simple. So like you were saying, I never had a gratitude journal, but I know that that's an effective thing to do. Like I heard of a recent study where they saw that people that won a lottery, a million dollar lottery, Six months later, they had the same level of happiness as beforehand. And like if a person, God forbid, became paralyzed, six months later, they're at the same level of happiness they were beforehand. What happens to them doesn't, it's not what changes you. But people that kept a gratitude journal, six months later, they were actually at a higher level of happiness set point. Like they were changed. It's not those events that happen to you, it's developing the skills from within. Like you said, that is what changes you as a person so that you can actually go on and live a happier life. With addictions, we try desperately to fill the hole within with, and it's not a physical hole. It's a spiritual hole. And what fills it is gratitude. So nothing else works. After you finish the whole bag of potato chips or the whole box of chocolate chip cookies or the whole container of ice cream, you feel emptier than the container. You know, you feel e even worse. It doesn't fill us up. And the more we can remember what does fill us, then we change from a mindset of scarcity to a recognition that there's really an abundance. We, we may have grown up with a sense of scarcity, but we can change that. We really can. We have 
what's called neuroplasticity. We can change our brains to become more grateful. Yeah, I'm a big fan of studying the brain, and it's amazing how much just in the past 20 years that we're learning more about the brain. Because I remember growing up, there's like, yeah, you got your brain cells, and then once they're gone, they're gone. And yeah. finding out that neuroplasticity, your brain does change. And especially if you're active in addiction, and once you stop, your brain changes. You have to allow it to give it that yes. time to change. Yeah. Uh, I think this is right around about two years. That's probably why it's that two-year mark that we've always uh, known is like when your brain actually heals itself and rewires. I am a firm believer in way whatever works because addiction is definitely a death sentence because all the fit stuff that they're putting in everything. Um, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody out there that has that doesn't know somebody that's over to lost friends of mine and clients and stuff that I've had in the past and it's just a bad, bad thing. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like this pleasure ladder uh, and I like how you said it's all, it's all in your hand and you look at your hand and you can remember those five pleasure things. And Oh I, yeah. I, it, it Also on my website, if people want to, they can download a beautiful graphic chart of the pleasure ladder to put on their fridge or their cabinet, wherever they'll see it. Just to remind them of these five levels, it goes into more detail about them. And, and it gives you a sense of abundance because like w we can't live with restrictions all the time. This is about recognizing to get over an addiction. We need to pour more joy into our lives because identify what brings you more pleasure than like eating like Let's say there's that show, the Netflix show, My 600 Pound Life, and all the people say the same thing. They all say, food is the only thing giving me pleasure anymore. And they just keep eating. The same with any addiction. They get stuck there because it works. It brings immediate comfort. If you change to an abundance mindset and you don't live in fear that you don't have enough pleasure in your life and you try these other things, when a person feels like overeating, they can say, is it my body that's hungry or my soul? Or, or they can say, if I eat 95 more spoonfuls of this ice cream, will I then feel full? Because you know you won't. Like You've already had a good meal. It's not going to do that. You, you start to recognize these things. And that's what helps you to change the recognition that you have the power to bring all kinds of of these wonderful natural pleasures into your life. That's what this world was made for. It was really a beautiful garden that we're in. And, and we can do all these wonderful things. That's the purpose of our life here, really just to experience gratitude. I'll give an example of this. This is like a tangerine, but, or an orange, you know, these are an orange or a tangerine or, or any fruit, it's green, in the beginning, it's all green because they're camouflaged in with the leaves. And then when they're ready for us, they call to us. We're ready. They become like bright and beautiful colors so that we want to eat them. They're the brightest colors when they're ripe. And then they smell beautiful. They look beautiful. And they're individually packaged for us. Amazing. And they have this peel to keep the sweet juiciness in for months. And then when we experience them and we enjoy the pleasure of tasting them, then at the end, we're left with these seeds, which are meant to go back into the earth and become infinite more trees and infinite more oranges. It's like amazing. So there's so much wisdom and loving kindness just in one little orange. When we can mindfully appreciate things and not take them for granted, it changes us so much. And that's possible for all of us. A grape, a raisin, an orange, an apple, just experiencing these small things in our lives with a new sense of wonder and awe and appreciation, that's the way to practice gratitude in a small way and then we could build on that. Yes. It's amazing all the things we take for granted. I ask my clients all the time, are you happy? And it's like, let's not, let's not overcomplicate it. Okay. So are you happy? Yes. And 
you know, nine, nine point nine. I'm like, no, I'm not because right. I'm struggling with this addiction or I got this going on. What choices can you make to get happy? It's not something that someone else can do. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it, and it might be in a bad relationship with somebody and they don't need to be with and they feel like they have to be with them. But I mean, if you're not happy, you're not happy. I mean, I, I'm a firm believer we're not put on this world to be miserable. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. They may be afraid to end that relationship because they don't want to be alone. They're compensating for what went on in their childhood. So that's why the more we can bring compassion into our lives through these gratitude experiences, through same moments, the more we won't want to continue with abusive relationships. It doesn't mean we have to be grateful for abuse. No, it gets us used to giving ourselves self-compassion so that we become more used to that and we're not willing to put up with behaviors that are abusive or that we shouldn't be involved with. We get used to filling our lives with more pleasurable experiences so that we have more clarity too and more respect for ourselves. And we begin to feel more worthy. Many people that have addictions through whatever relationships they had at home didn't get a sense of worthiness about themselves. This is a way to build worthiness, to actually experience the compassion that's in all these natural things in life, the joy that you experience when you're moving and dancing and listening to music. There are so many natural pleasures in this world to get out and spend more time in nature. These are things that you've heard that bring happiness, but now you can actually understand why they do because they were designed to actually fill up our soul on earth. Th these were designed for our pleasure. Like it could have been, it could have been that we didn't even need any of this food and we didn't need food. But no, all these things were given to us on purpose to bring us pleasure in, in like the best way possible. So many varieties of apples and oranges and nuts and all these amazing things. It wasn't necessary. They were all created out of, out of, infinite loving kindness for us and wisdom like the wisdom in a seed is unbelievable if you think about it so not taking things for granted when you begin to take those first steps it's it's just really a transformative way to live yeah and going back to being in unhealthy relationships and i like the book the four agreements don miguel ruiz and he says in there and he's like We'll allow someone to abuse us to the level that we abuse ourselves. That's a good and, point. And I use this example all the time. It's like, okay, let's say I abuse myself to a seven, then I'm going to put up with somebody abusing me to a seven. Yes. But if they go 7.1, then yes. okay, we got a problem. Yes. So I always, to my clients, is learn to love yourself, where you maybe only abuse yourself to a two. Somebody comes in at a seven, you, you'll spot them 10 miles away and yes. run, get away from them. Beautiful. You know? Beautiful. And that's how we start to love ourselves, lingering, saving these moments. It's you start very basic, very simple. You start looking at flowers, looking at the trees, going to the ocean. You start appreciating your own breath. You know, the pandemic, I think it was a huge push forward for all of us spiritually. Like overnight, we began to appreciate things we took for granted, getting together with other people, being able to hug somebody, I mean, like our own health. These are things we were not valuing. And now we know we could lose all of this just in one day. It's amazing. So we have this opportunity in the world to get back to our essence, our simple selves, and begin to appreciate life in a simple way again. And that's how we can build more loving relationships with ourselves. Yeah. And talking about the pandemic, I mean, it really did make you take a step back and go like, man, not able to be around my family, loved ones, yes. people on lockdown, businesses closed. Yeah. I mean, we're still seeing a lot of the ripple effects. A lot of people stopped working and never came back. And yeah, a lot of places that you go and then there are everybody is shorthanded. I don't know. I think it, it'll linger on some more and hopefully knock on wood. We don't have to go through all that again. Hopefully we learn something from it. <laughs> yeah. Not to take everything for granted. Yeah. We can lose it in a minute. 
There is so much to be grateful for. Are correct. Uh, but I highly recommend anybody start a gratitude journal. There's tons of them online you can download, or I'm sure there's a journaling app or something that you can get <laughs> on your phone. Take something like the pleasure ladder, take a picture of it on your phone, make it your screensaver. That right. way, because you right. look like how many times people look at their phone in a day. Yeah. That's what I always tell a lot of people that I work with that are incarcerated. Put a picture of a jail or something. Is that a way every time you look at your phone, you're like, okay, well, I got to keep things straight because so I don't want to go back to this. And I used to give them a, they had like the sheriff's department star, a picture of the bunks and a picture of the food. I said, just this little reminder. I said, just put it somewhere in your house. Yeah. I don't want to go back to that. Yes. All addictions are prisons, literally, or just in your brain. That's where you are. Exactly. Breaking loose is freedom. It's the freedom of your soul over, you know, that you regain your core real self again, not the addiction. The addiction is no longer controlling you. It's your soul that gets to enjoy life again. It gets revived. For me, the world turned completely gray and, and, and breaking out of that, all the colors came back. That's what it felt like, like the Wizard of Oz movie where it's all black and white and then it gets colorful. That, 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 that's what it felt like for me. I, I, I want that for everybody. Yeah, because we're always chasing that, chasing that pleasure and we think that alcohol, drugs, sex addiction or whatever addiction that you have, food, and we think it's going to last. Our clients, I'm like, you can take all the drugs in the world, you can't stay high yes. 24-7. And right. you got to figure out where is your happiness. Yes. And to overcome a habit, you need a greater and more lasting pleasure to sub in. It actually fills you up in the greatest way. That's what people need to experience more and more. They've been through pain and the drugs, the food, all this covers up that pain. Initially, I have this image. That we are like this soul. We're shining. And when we go through pain... We put coverings over us and then we can't even feel that we're still shining. We don't even feel that our soul is still shining. We need help from people like you that assist people to help remove those levels. We need support, you know, get that, get that soul shining stronger and stronger so we could feel it again. And that's through gratitude. Gratitude is what fuels the soul to, to begin to shine in life again. Being thankful for the things that we have and not everything's going to go your way and you're going right. to have good days and bad days, right. but there's always that silver lining. There's yes. always something that you could turn a negative into a positive. Yes. Yes. And I'm a firm believer in, I think that the words that we use, whether it's in our heads or the words that come out of our mouths are huge and just changing one or two words and I had a, a guest on and he had a, an amazing story where he, he was like paralyzed out of nowhere. They had to figure out, I mean, he's fine now, but uh, he says, the way I viewed it, he's like, it didn't happen to me. It happened for me. Yeah. He said, because I started looking inward. He's like, I ended up writing a book and now I think he's doing Ted talks and stuff. Yes. And it all came from him getting sick. Just yes. out of the blue. Very, very inter interesting story. Yeah. And but. anyone suffering from an addiction is sensitive soul. You know, that's why you're aware that you need more pleasure in your life. That's why, but we don't know how to really bring it in. So, you know, and anyone that's gone through addiction like that person, whatever they've been through, they can use it as a tool to help other people. And oh, the same with anybody in recovery can begin to help other people. And that helps them to shine more too by doing that. Yeah. And that's why with the 12 steps, uh, giving back, it feels good. Yes. You know, trying yes. to replace it, helping other people, helping people that have gone down similar roads. I mean, it's never going to be exactly what you went through, but Ex you can still uh, reach out and help. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I've been lucky enough to know that uh, some of the people that I've worked with, they get out of jail, they go to halfway house, and they end up working at the halfway house. Yes. You know? And yes. I, I saw one this back when everybody was wearing masks and stuff during the pandemic. Yeah. So I go out into the, the front lobby, and this guy says, hey, 
Miss Clemens. He's like, do you remember me? I was like, well, I, I can't see your face. And he said, he's oh, don't worry. He's like, I'm here to pick up somebody Aww. and take them to the halfway house that I work at now. And I said, and it feels good to help people, don't it? And he's like, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, so yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on Miss Getz. Please check out all her books. Oh, yeah. www.getz.com. And Getz is spelled that funny way. Yeah, so G-E-T-Z. And all my books are there, but also you could download a free copy of The Pleasure Ladder. Really important to just about everybody, I think. <laughs> yeah, and her, her books are available on Amazon. She's got several, so if you've got kids out there, and they all got good reviews, so I'm guessing they're good books. I'm teaching children early on these skills. How to be a grateful person. When you begin life like that, to see the world through joyful eyes, it makes all the difference. Yeah. Well, I think what you're doing is amazing. And you're right. Try to get to them young. Thank you so much for being on. And I'll definitely put your website in the description. Probably do the Amazon link. That way, if people are interested, then they'll go and uh, check out all the good work that you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you for the wonderful work you're doing. Thank you so much.